as caretakers of this gift from the Creator. So we recognize the painful colonial history of displacement and injustice that the First Peoples have endured. And we honor their enduring connection to this land, their resilience, and their contributions to our shared heritage. Let us remember and honor their traditions, their culture, and their wisdom. And may our recognition today be a step towards healing and justice. That way, you join with me. Westdale United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga and the land covered by the Williams Treaty. We respectfully Good and faithful, strong in mercy, 
God of promise and love, wild and challenging, glorious and graceful, your song is of love and hope. Our life in you is eternal. We are the family of God and we can hear you calling our names. God of promise and love, we shout the good news. Remove among us when we gather in your name. So we gather at the door of a light-filled dawn where the gift of hope rises in our soul. Your glory fills this place. Wondrous creator, you love this world into being. Amazing God of amazing grace, give us this day our daily bread. May we know a shining in our hearts, and let it shine upon our souls with healing and grace. And may we find a new language to speak. May we find a new daring within our souls. Sweep through this holy place, bright and beautiful God, and sweep us up in your love again, so our souls are dance. Bless our worship. Make it an altar, a path, a place to begin again. Make it become for us a place of sanctuary, of rest, a place to dream. For we pray in the name of the bread of life, Jesus, our companion, who promises to be with us always. Amen. Wow. Boat. So this is the new hymn, eh? And, uh, I know you're up to the challenge, and uh, the wonderful hymn, wonderful words from more voices from the other uh, uh, newer hymn book, and it's called Jesus Saw Them Fishing, Fish With Me. I was going to say that uh, with the new month, we've been rather ambitious about uh, selecting new hymns, and um, I know that in teaching and learning, it takes 16 repetitions of something before it's Word. So we won't get 16 repetitions, but, um, and also you learn by listening first before you learn by actually singing along. So with this in mind, you are welcome to join us in singing all the verses and the refrain, but I thought, thought you might be able to focus on the refrain and every time you sing the refrain, you do that this time. And then the next time when we do the hymn, you'll know it perfectly. <laughs> Stephanie? Are you going to do the refrain only with the congregation right now? First. Okay, yes. there it is. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'll play it first, the choir will sing, <coughs> and then uh, we'll all sing it. Okay? The refrain.
prayer of illumination. <clears throat> we are called to be Christ's church. What do you hear Jesus saying to you when you pray the words? You are a rock on which I shall build my church. <laughs> Living God, loving God, God of truth and wisdom, claim our hearts by your peace and passion. God of love, whose voice echoes deep within, make us bold and dear as we wish your truth. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, God spoke, and what God was, the Word was. In the name of the Word God sent, Jesus, Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, on page 1480 of the Pew Bibles. The Tongue. My friends, we should not all try to become teachers. In fact, teachers will be judged more strictly than others. All of us do many wrong things, but if you can control your tongue, you are mature and able to control your whole body. By putting a bit into the mouth of a horse, we can turn the horse in different directions. It takes strong winds to move a large sailing ship. The captain uses only a small rudder to make it go in any direction. Our tongues are small too, and yet they brag about big things. It takes only a spark to start a forest fire. The tongue is like a spark. It is an evil power that dirties the rest of the body and sets a person's entire life on fire with flames that come from hell itself. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures can be tamed and have been tamed, but our tongues get out of control. They are restless and evil and always spreading deadly poison. My dear friends, with our tongues we speak both praises and curses. We praise our Lord and Father, and we curse people who were created to be like God, and this isn't right. Can clean water and dirty water both flow from the same spring? Can a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? Does fresh water stop from a well full of salt water? The word of God for the people of God. <coughs> be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 to 38, on page 1205 of the Pew Bibles. Who is Jesus? Jesus and his disciples went to the villages near the town of Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, What do people say about me? The disciples answered, Some say you are John the Baptist, or maybe Elijah. Others say you are one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked them, But who do you say I am? You are the Messiah, Peter replied. Jesus warned the disciples not to tell anyone about him. Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, The nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make the Son of Man suffer terribly. He will be rejected and killed, but three days later he will rise to life. Then Jesus explained clearly what he meant. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. But when Jesus turned and saw the disciples, he corrected people, Peter. He said to him, Satan, get away from me. You are thinking like everyone else and not like God. Jesus then told the crowd and the disciples to come closer, and he said, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me and for the good news, you will save it. What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What would you give to get back your soul? Do not be ashamed of me and my message among those unfaithful and sinful people. If you are, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I can assure you that some of the people standing here will not die before they see God's kingdom come with power. This is the good news of Jesus Christ.
Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Wendy, for you open the bread of the word. The word, eh, seems to be a theme. Words and language. And uh, we heard from St. James there. Kind of a difficult passage. That's something I should read probably at least three times a week, I think, about bridling my tongue. And uh, my father used to say I'm like a donkey. I think he meant I was stubborn, but he meant I'm like a horse, too. Sometimes you say things, and I not only talk too much, but you say something, and you're like, oh, gosh, but um, words, eh? language. Christianity offers us a language, I think. And so that's the team that emerged uh, for me uh, uh, this week. And so that's uh, our anthems. Is that an Tandy found a beautiful picture, Breaking New Ground. How many gods for you? Waters and the flower growing in the cracks. And, uh, would you pray with me? God of signs and wonders, <coughs> we look at your word again and again. Shine your light upon our path. Open our minds to your wisdom, God of mercy and kindness. Open our hearts to your love. By your wide grace, show us your narrow door. And give us the language to speak your love in a thousand ways. All this we pray in Jesus' name, whose voice we know. Amen. It's so wonderful to be with you today. Had a bit of a rough week. I don't often turn into a kind of I start to whine when I get sick, but I, this week was rough. I had a migraine, a headache, the whole with the last uh, week, and I've uh, been getting them since I was 11 years old. And I go numb on the left side, I can't see, it gets sparkly, and uh, I was kind of bragging the other day how they've, at 40, they, so I sort of outgrew them. I don't get them as often, but it used to be about 15 days a month, uh, pretty, pretty much a half a month, and uh, they just kind of, you know, stiff upper lip and just uh, continue on, and, and uh, but I really kind of unraveled this week, and uh, I thought, of, gosh, golly, so I went to the doctor, and uh, so I really, Great for feeling good, and uh, and it was through texts and calls and kind words and Christianity offers us a language, you know, to get through things. It takes more than the medicine. We show the world who Jesus is by how we live, by the words we use. Jesus is a way of life built on the virtue of loving kindness. From the doctor to the nurses to the pharmacist to the folks here, to Stephanie texting me and saying, is there anything you need? Is there anything I can get you? No one say like that. That's no like that. Is there anything I can get you? Just let me know. Kind words. Abraham Joshua Heschel, the famous rabbi, friend of Martin Luther King Jr., said that speech has power. Words do not fade. What starts out as a sound ends in a deed. Did you watch the debate the other night? <laughs> yeah, she did well. Gosh. You see the power of words there, right? You see words that uh, tear down, and words that build up. You see the power of the words that build up. Words like hope. Words like hope punch holes in the darkness of words like hate. Darkness is no match for words of hope. Throughout the Bible, we are reminded about the power and influence of words. And one of those places is in the letter of uh, James, as we heard. Kind of a difficult reading. It's really it's a short book, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot in there about doers of the word, not being hearers of the word, but doers of the word. A lot of talk about the word, the word, the word. A friend of mine this week uh, sent me uh, an article from the, the New York Times. Uh, my friend is an is a, uh, Anglican priest. He's a, uh, he lives in the States in, in Cleveland. He's a hospital chaplain there. In the States, the Anglican church is called the Episcopalian uh, Church. And, and so he, I haven't talked with him at some time. We knew each other in Cape Breton and uh, became new friends and he sent me this wonderful article by a gentleman named David Brooks from the New York Times. And 
He wrote an article entitled, What Our Words Tell Us. I found it interesting. He talks about how our, our language is evolving since the pandemic. With everything becoming digital, it's possible to study the use of words and the frequency of certain words used across the decades. And David Brooks, the author, unpacks this extensive study and notes two main things. First, he said, is in the last 50 years, words and phrases like personal, self, individual, I come first, I can do it myself, all increased, he says, dramatically in usage. Conversely, communal words and phrases like community, collective, tribe, share, united, united, together, and common good were all on the decline over the last 50 years. Second, he says, the word search studies also showed a decline in general moral terms like virtue, or decency, or conscience. Words associated with moral excellence like honesty, patience, compassion, <coughs> were used less frequently. <coughs> David Brooks noted the usage of courage words like bravery and fortitude fell significantly in the last 50 years. <coughs> usage of gratitude words like thankfulness and appreciation dropped off also. Usage of humility words like modesty and humbleness dropped by 52%, he says. Usage of compassion words like kindness and helpfulness dropped by almost 60%. He says our language is changing. This is the conclusion from David Brooks. Over the past half century, society has become more individualistic. As it has become more individualistic, it has also become less morally aware because social and moral fabrics are linked together. And the shifting use of words reflects the shift in the culture. <coughs> With less words about community bonds and compassion and conviction and care, we have increasing problems and divisions among us. Unity is the great need of the hour. The United Church of Ours, Westdale United, has an important ministry to the community to show a way of life and a language to speak. Way back in the later part of the first century when the Church of Christ was just figuring out how to be the church, James wrote his letter. And this has had vivid insights about the power and problem of words Tongue is a small number, but it boasts great exploits. Tongues, our words need taming and discipline. James tells us we can bless the Lord with our words, and we can curse those who are made in the image of God with our words. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be simple, James says. With our readings today that Wendy read so well are Tough readings, some scripture readings kind of swaddle us like a baby, and others throw us into the deep end of the pool. <coughs> this one, I think, sort of throws us. Are we God's people that what we say and do, what we say and what we do matter very much to Jesus? About three weeks ago, after church one Sunday, I walked out of the, this beautiful church, and as I was walking to my car, there was a tall, thin man there with two dogs, and he was sort of standing up and looking at the church. And I waved and started to get into my car, and he called me back, and he said, pointing at the doors into the church, he said, what is it that you believe in there? I felt like saying churches at 10.30, come and find out. <laughs> When you do, you will see. Come and see. When we come to church, what is it that we believe in here? And I said, you are not alone. I started to say the United Church Creed, and I thought I stopped, and I thought it's not exactly the sort of answer you want to recite in the driveway. 
even if you think somebody might stick around until you finish, I wasn't sure. And said that Jesus is what Jesus does. What does it mean to the man standing on the sidewalk? What do you believe in there? I told him my name. He told me his name. He said, my name is Isaac. And I said, that's a biblical name. And when we leave here, what, what do we say Jesus is? Who does Jesus say you are? Who does Jesus say we are? In this morning's reading that what he read so well, Jesus is the man on the sidewalk who asks the question about what it all means. And language matters, Jesus says. He has been healing, and so he's been also teaching every now and then. He quizzes his disciples to see how much they're taking in, to see if their language has changed, if they are seeing the world in a new way, to see how well they have understood him. Will people say, I am? Yes, them. you say, I am. I wish that the Bible has come down to us like a musical score with all the pauses written in, or like the script of a play that tells us what happens when nothing is being said. It would be helpful to have the stage direction to something. Silence, who knows how long that silence lasts before Peter breaks in with his answer, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who do you say Christ is? The man on the sidewalk. Who does Christ say you are? Who does Christ say we are? At Westdale. His name was Isaac. Which got me thinking about Isaac in the Bible. The Bible tells us that Isaac, whose father was Abraham, when Isaac returns to the land of his father, the first thing that he does was he uncovers the wells that his father had dug. The wells that the Philistines had filled in. It's the first thing he does. He uncovers old wells. And then he digs some new wells. Isaac is known as the man of wells. If you read in the book of Genesis, he digs a lot of wells, Isaac. Imagine for a moment the arid landscape of biblical times where water was a scarce and precious resource. In those ancient days, wells were not merely water sources. They represented life, sustenance, and community. Entire civilizations were built around the availability of wells. And they held deep spiritual significances as well. A well was a gathering place, a meeting point for weary travelers, and a symbol of provision and blessing. Isaac, the son of Abraham, occupies a remarkable place in the biblical narrative. Although his father and his son Jacob often overshadow him, Isaac's life is marked by a unique connection to wells. In fact, Isaac is often referred to as the man of wells. But throughout his journey, he encounters numerous wells, and these encounters reveal profound spiritual truths about his life and legacy. Just as physical wells were crucial for survival in biblical times, spiritual wells are vital for spiritual well-being and growth. Remember Jesus meeting the woman at the well. These wells are the wellsprings of our faith, the deep reservoirs of divine grace and truth that connects us to God and His purposes for our lives. Who do we say Christ is? Who does Christ say you are? Who does Christ say we are? What is it that you believe in there? We are the ones who together uncover old wells. We are the ones who together dig new wells. We are the ones who offer this community waters of life by shining bright together. Who do we say Jesus is? Who does Jesus say you are? Who does Jesus say we are? Companions. The word literally companion literally means to share one's bread with. We are talking here of a love that can change the way we see each other. 
See, pilgrims of Westdale, we have this call to be open to God's guidance, to drink deeply of the well of life, to lift our sails and catch the spiritual wind. And it is a belief that our lives have and will continue to make a difference. This is kingdom talk for kingdom people. And to us, 2,000 years later, this kind of talk sounds rather bizarre, upside down, to deny ourselves and take up our cross. But others first, Everything is opposite from what we expect. The logic of this world can no longer answer our questions and give us the language to speak. The life of faith is the only way to explain it. Come and see what you believe in there. As people, we are called to be saints, to live out our hope of these teachings, and others will see that God's people really have learned to trust God. Others will see that God's people do hunger and thirst for righteousness because we too dream of a day when God's justice will prevail for all people everywhere. Others will notice in the way we live that God's people are merciful because we have received God's mercy and know how wonderful that is. We are citizens with the saints, Paul says, part of the community of faith from the beginning of the church seek the upside down kingdom of God because we have learned that no one has to face the challenges of life alone. So it is our joyous but risky task as a congregation of disciples to create a community where forgiveness is real, where peace is genuine, where dependence upon God and one another is seen as good things, where people are not afraid to be who they are because they know people of God will surround them and embrace them and accept them. What do you believe in there? What does Jesus say we are? We are his friends, we are his saints, we are his light in this world. To be where God is is to follow Christ. And it means receiving our lives as gifts and sharing that life that we have been given. We are the body of Christ in this place. Uncovering old wells and breaking new ground and uncovering God's living water. The gospel of Christ shines from deep within you. The kingdom of God is at hand. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen and amen. I invite you to lift up your voices and join in singing, River running with you and me. River run deep. I think this is another new one, eh? Maybe? Oh, we've sung it. We've sung it. You said, okay.
grateful. I'm just going to share on behalf of Ian. Uh, Ian said at choir on Thursday night when he said right at the end of the night, I'm not going to be there on Sunday, but he uh, is at the Blue Jays game. So he wanted uh, to let people know that he's joyful about it, but he, need, he needs everybody to pray for the Blue Jays <laughs>
before all things. The blue sky and the green, the changing colors, the soft beam of sunlight, the song in the wilderness, the deep breath, mercy and quietness, and friendship, the miracles of the daily. God our Creator, great is your name, great is your love. We breathe and it is your breath that fills us. And we look and it is your light by which we see move and it is your dancing within us. Or we gather in gratitude. Good friends, good family, for health, precious moments, for companions on the journey, those who we share our bread with, and our faith with, and our laughter with, and our tears with. thanks for people we haven't seen here for a while. Maybe thanks for their glorious light within them. We give you thanks for Lois Wilson, right Reverend Lois Wilson, for her spark, for her wisdom, for her long ministry. May continue to bear fruit in this church. Thanks for all those who share their faith with us and teach us and inspire us. For women in the church, show us your graciousness, your dedication. We give you thanks for so many things. Oh Lord, words will not do. Oh Lord, listen to our tears, listen to our heartbeat, listen to our breathing. Listen to our laughter. Into your care, O oh God, with a listening heart, we place all those we carry with us today. And we lift them up to you, those who we carry with us, those who we love, out loud or in the silence within us. For, give us your grace to work for. Lord, we give you thanks for our beautiful choir today, for your spirit that works in and through them, and their lovely music that fills the rafters and fills our hearts. We give you thanks for moments of joy and fellowship and recreation. We give you thanks for the Blue Jays. gather and to celebrate and to cheer as one team you call us in unity we share one spirit the Lord help us to see your presence in one another in this warm place to find ourselves that we find ourselves in each other inspire us on a journey to bring light to the world and let friendship and wonder grow be our hope be our love Love of God grow in us, laughter of God dance in us, justice of God define us. More friendship and a listening heart are needed, and we offer grace in the Spirit of Christ. Strengthen our hope that we may love as the body of Christ in this world. For we pray in the name of your great love for us, the risen Christ who stands among us and calls us, each by name, the name that fills this holy place and teaches us to pray, our Father. Lord in heaven, our will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
begins to show us our minute permission. This is called Educating Future Leaders. Mission and service does a surprising amount of development in your local church, recruiting new ministers and funding theological schools. It even shapes the hymn books you sing from every service. Another important way mission and service supports local ministry, by providing academic bursaries for students studying to become ministers and theological leaders. The church has a lot to offer in terms of witness to the community and supporting people who are struggling, explains the Reverend Dr. Jennifer Jansen Ball, the United Church's Executive Minister for Theological Leadership. The money is really helpful, she says, but the other thing that is so important to students is realizing that people throughout the church cared enough to donate to mission and service. The Reverend Alexa Gilmore received one of these bursaries when she was still a ministry candidate. I was a single parent, and I knew I couldn't get through without support, Gilmore says. I felt blessed by God through people who donated and who, by giving, encouraged me on my journey. I have tremendous gratitude for that important role the church played in my life at that time. Jansen Ball wants you to know that your gifts do matter. They matter both tangibly in people's lives, in a real way, but also in intangible ways because they signal the support of the wider community, she says. The care of people who are strangers to one another. The importance and impact of that cannot be overstated. Giving to mission and service as an opportunity to support future and current leaders. Those gifts make a significant difference. Thank you, Janice. Reaching out like Christ around the world. St. Peter wrote, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you have been given. Beloved of Christ, the gift of your life is a blessing to this world, so let us give with cheerful hearts, presenting our offerings of commitment and support to Christ's church, right here in the Electric City and beyond through the Mission and Service Fund and the Healing Fund.
That's coming up Friday, September the 27th at 9.30. And the prayer shawls, and beautiful prayer shawls. It's, uh, well, not that long ago, we celebrated what's the 400th prayer shawl? 500th? Gosh, so the 500th at uh, Arvis. Very good. Yeah, so if you'd like to become a part of that and, and, uh, and support that. And their faith and film series, uh, faith formation uh, committee is going to, and, and the outreach committee are going to work together. And, and uh, so we start a movie, uh, start that up in uh, September. Uh, so that's Friday, the same day, so Friday, September 27th, 6 30 here in the sanctuary. And uh, the donation will go to the YWCA. The Pride March is coming up, that's September 28th. If you'd like to be part of that. Welcome back lunch. Excited about that. That's Sunday, September the 29th. Uh, Ten dollars per person. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. The Outreach uh, Apple Pie fundraiser for the El Yusuf family uh, that we're supporting. Uh, and uh, so that's um, so we'll be collecting money on the following Sunday. So uh, today, and next Sunday, and Sunday after, and two Sundays after that. Maze and Garden of Plenty. Lots of wonderful tomatoes there, Dennis, that is grown, and uh, so lots of tomatoes there. Take and uh, bring in your jars, it's harvest time, and uh, so for the uh, snowflake tea, the annual Christmas bazaar, so you bring in your jars for jam and, and uh, Ukrainite, uh, so that's Saturday, October the 5th, I'm up there, Anderson Hall, it's a big gathering, that's wonderful. And, uh, yeah, any other announcements, anyone just want to... Lots of things you can be a part of. Wonderful. Why don't you lift up your voices and join us in the healing of the nations. Christ in you. 